Hello and welcome to another episode of History Stuff. So this is the latest in a series of mini biographies I've been doing about the careers of various interesting figures from the 13th century. Uh, so far I've done the likes of William Wallace, uh, Schwellen at Griffith, John Common, and today I want to look at another figure from Wales and this is Madog ap Llewellyn. Um, another very interesting, if uh, slightly obscure, figure from uh, Welsh history. So uh, Madog is mainly remembered uh, for leading a very serious revolt against uh, Edward I in Wales in uh, 1294 to 1295. Um, Edward had previously conquered Wales, or thought he had a few years earlier in 1283, but um, this uh, major uprising, um, interpreted sometimes as a national revolt, uh, blows up in 1294 and the king is forced to bring his entire army, his entire military strength back to Wales to effectively reconquer the country. And uh, Madog uh, is one of several leaders and uh, probably the most important. He leads to revolt in Gwynedd in North Wales. So he's remembered as this great resistance leader to uh, the King of England. Um, but as ever, as ever, when you take a closer look at these figures, it's um, just not that straightforward. So who was Madog really? Uh, well, he was one of the four sons of Llewellyn ap Meredith, who was the Lord of Merionev, um, which is a region of uh, North Wales inside Gwynedd. And for a long time, for generations past, uh, Madog's family had been locked in a very bitter dispute with the Lords of Gwynedd, that is the ruling house of Aberfrau, over ownership of Merioniv. They'd been fighting over the lordship. And Madog's father, Llewellyn, is actually driven out of his homeland. He's driven into exile in England uh, by Llewellyn ap Griffith, who I made a video about previously. Um, this happens in about 1256, and Llewellyn ap Meredith is forced to basically live as the pensioner uh, of the King of England for several years. Uh, he, he's given money by Henry III, the English king, um, to live off. And him, him and his family are forced to live in England, uh, which allows uh, Llewellyn ap Griffith, um, the future Prince of Wales, to extend his power over Merioniv and basically seize outright this very important territory that the two families have been uh, fighting over for many years. Uh, and this kind of internal feud is far from uncommon in Wales or England, really, or, or anywhere else in medieval Europe. There's uh, dynastic and territorial disputes going on all the time. Um, but in the case of Wales, what it does is to uh, undermine uh, any effort at what you might call national unity. Uh, Llewellyn at Griffith's ambition is to unite the whole of Wales under his banner. Again, as I said in the previous video, become the head of a unified state and effectively um, come to rival England, Scotland, France, or any of the other um, major unified states of the period. But his efforts are undermined by these old feuds, these, these old um, factional and inter-family squabbles, because uh, the, the laws of Merioniv are his cousins. They're, they're all related. They're all kinsmen. Um, and Llewellyn ap Meredith, who is living in exile, he wants to get his lands back, obviously. So what he does is he enlists in the army of the King of England and he helps Henry and his son, Lord Edward, the future Edward I, in their um, various military campaigns against the Prince of Wales, against Llewellyn. Uh, and Llewellyn ap Meredith is actually killed in one of these wars in about 1262. He's killed fighting um, at the Valley of the Clun in mid Wales, probably still um, on Henry's payroll, fighting basically as his mercenary, but also fighting to get his lands back. And Madog, the subject of this video, who's the eldest of Llewellyn's sons, he and his three brothers uh, make this attempt to reoccupy their ancestral territory in Merioniv, um, but they're only able to occupy it temporarily before uh, Prince Llewellyn comes back with his army and drives them out again. So uh, Madog and the rest of his family are forced to once again uh, go back into exile in England and they have to stay there, so far as we know, for uh, quite a few years until another war breaks out, this time between uh, Prince Llewellyn and the new King of England, Edward I, in 1276. And Madog uh, thinks he can use this as his opportunity to finally get his father's lands back. Uh, in order to do this, he also uh, enrolls in the Royal Army. He serves Edward in this war and he, his name actually appears on the wage roll, the payroll of the Royal Army. 
in which he's described as Lord of Merionov, which is quite significant because it means that the English have formally acknowledged his title. Um, and this is probably so uh, they can be sure of his support, uh, that he's going to support them against Prince Llewellyn. Now, the war ends, as again, as I've previously described, with the uh, temporary defeat of the Prince of Wales. Uh, and in the aftermath, um, although Madog has fought for the king, he's still not able to get Merionith back outright. Uh, he has to take Prince Llewellyn to court this time uh, and try and win the land back uh, via legal means. So having fought Llewellyn on the battlefield for many years, they're now fighting at law. Uh, and Madog uh, throws all kinds of interesting accusations against Prince Llewellyn. Um, he accuses the prince of seizing one of his servants, this poor chap named Adam, and hanging him without trial uh, within the boundaries of Merionev. Um, and if that's true, if the accusation is true, it means that Prince Llewellyn uh, murdered a man apparently uh, out of some sort of symbolic reason. He was trying to show that he was the, he had effective control of Merionith and could do what he liked within it. Uh, and Madog brings all these charges before the king's justices, before his judges, uh, but Prince Llewellyn simply refuses to turn up in court to answer them. Uh, he, he just ignores um, what Madog is trying to do and he refuses to be drawn into this legal battle. Um, maybe because he doesn't want to give Madog the satisfaction, but also because he's got a great deal else on his plate and he simply uh, can't afford to be dealing with yet another uh, legal case. Um, and then uh, the next war that breaks out in 1282, which ends with the final defeat and death of Prince Llewellyn, um, Madog vanishes. As far as we know, Madog uh, plays no role in this war. He doesn't seem to have fought for Edward this time, but nor did he fight for the Welsh. Um, I mean, the silence of the record speaks volumes, really. It probably means that Madog chose to stay out of it, stay on his lands in Anglesey, uh, because his family have also got lands on Anglesey, the island off the coast of uh, northwest Wales, as well as their uh, ancestral lordship on the mainland in Merioneth. And although they've lost control of Merioneth, they are able to keep control of their remaining estates on Anglesey. Uh, and Madog uh, probably stays there and doesn't do very much. He's waiting on the outcome. And the outcome is that Llewellyn is killed, uh, his brother David is captured and executed a few months later, and um, Edward uh, effectively conquers Wales. He certainly conquers Gwynedd. And we, we don't know, unfortunately, uh, what Madog does in these years. There's a great yawning gap in the record. Um, he disappears for the best part of 17 to 18 years. Um, and the likelihood is that he, he's just simply not doing very much. Um, he's keeping his head down, as I said, living on his estates in Anglesey and uh, just um, possibly waiting for, for better days, for, for better times to come. Uh, we know he has several sons himself. He has uh, four sons, so he's got a growing family. He's got a wife and a family. Um, so he, he's occupied with that, uh, living a normal life as a small landowner on, on Anglesey with his growing family. And it's only in 1294 when this revolt that I mentioned suddenly blows up that he comes to the fore again. Um, and the revolt certainly takes Edward by surprise because at the time he's uh, down in southern England mustering an army to take across to fight the French in Gascony. And he's got absolutely no uh, inkling that there's serious trouble brewing in Wales. Um, but there must have been some element of coordination uh, among the, the leaders of the Welsh. There's at least five Welshmen, including Madog, who take charge of the revolt in different parts of the country. Um, they've all got um, arguably separate motives, and I, I might go into those in a different video. Uh, but the, the general aim is to basically overthrow uh, the English um, destroy Edward's uh, control of Wales, tear down his administration, and um, basically throw out the King of England and so far as Madog is concerned, because remember he was um, a cousin of the last Prince of Wales, uh, David and Llewellyn before him, he uh, wants to re-establish his dynasty, the House of Aberthrow, within North Wales, and um, there is one sole single surviving charter from early 1295 in which Madog is explicitly called Prince of Wales, Lord of Snowdon and Prince of Wales, 
which are the titles that were taken by his kinsmen and his ancestors. And it is pretty obvious from this charter, which is a tiny thing, by the way. I'll, I'll put up a picture of it on the start of this video. It's a tiny square of parchment, but the uh, it's very significant in, in Welsh history. Uh, it's obvious that what Madog is doing is he's claiming or trying to claim and re-establish the claims of his ancestors to be the rulers of Wales. Um, it's a very ambitious thing to do, and suggests that Madog has got a certain uh, he's got a certain boldness about him. He's not he's not afraid to to, to make this to make this attempt. Uh, but unfortunately for him, it it fails. Uh, while the revolt is very serious, um, it's um, it, it, it isn't that, that the Welsh aren't able ultimately to uh, tear down Edward's administration. Uh, he brings his army, which was actually supposed to be directed against the French. Uh, it's about thirty thousand men. It's a very big army, um, and after several months of very bitter fighting. Uh, Madog and his uh, the other Welsh captains are forced to surrender. Madog is captured, uh, handed over to the king, um, but interestingly he doesn't suffer the same dreadful fate as his cousin David, who was hanged, drawn and quartered at Shrewsbury in 1283. Instead he's imprisoned in the Tower of London in uh, what appear to be quite comfortable conditions. Uh, there's no question that he'll ever be released, he's too dangerous for that, um, he's held for life. But his sons, who are imprisoned for a couple of years, they are released after a while, and they actually um, they they are transferred to the royal household, and they eventually become part of the bodyguard of uh, Edward the First's successor, Edward the Second, and they rise to become squires of the royal household, and they're not disinherited. Uh, there's no question now that they'll ever recover Mary Honest, that is now firmly under royal control, but they are allowed to keep their remaining family estates on Anglesey. Um, and while Madog uh, sadly probably dies in prison, he's last heard of in about 1312 and he's still in the tower, probably dies shortly after that. His four sons, as I said, are released um, and they live out their lives as free men, um, which marks an interesting change in uh, royal policy. Edward I had previously been quite harsh, quite severe with his treatment of um, the Princess of Wales who rebelled against him. But uh, with regard to Madog and his family, there, there's a very dramatic shift in policy. Um, Edward has learned that simply executing these uh, Welsh princes and attempting to control Wales and, and suppress the Welsh through bloody punitive measures is not necessarily the best thing to do. Instead, it's better to uh, rehabilitate them to an extent and try and sort of make them part of the club. Um, although Madog himself is obviously regarded as too dangerous to be allowed out, so he lives out his life in the tower. Um, and his sons, as I said, uh, live out their days as free men. Um, the last of them is was still farming the land on Anglesey in about 1355, mid-14th century, um, which is uh, almost 60 years after Madog's rebellion and his, his capture. Um, so obviously there was no attempt by Edward I's successors to um, go after the family. There's no grudges. Um, and then uh, after, after his sons die out, the, the family disappear off the radar. Um, they just vanish, uh, possibly die out, or at least in the direct line. And that marks the end, so far as we know, of um, the lineage of the princes of Gwynedd, the direct line. Um, and it's quite, uh, considering the, the dramatic history, what the princes of Gwynedd have tried to do, uh, all of the battles, the wars, the political scandals, the bloody executions, and all of this very dramatic history throughout the 12th and 13th centuries, it ends with a bit of a whimper. It ends with a, an obscure gentleman farmer living quietly on Anglesey and then presumably dying in the, in the fullness of time in his bed, probably. And, uh, and that's about it, at least for that branch of the family. So that is, in a nutshell, again, very compressed um, overview of the life and career of Madogak Llewellyn, uh, a very interesting and, again, slightly ambivalent figure from um, a very complicated time in history, and Welsh history in particular. 
Okay, I hope you enjoyed that. Uh, thank you. Goodbye.